Welcome to another Spotlight video where we guide you through the biological sex differences in the human skeleton spotlight in your text. After watching this video, you should be able to describe how the sex of most skeletons can be identified by examination of just a few key bony landmarks. Have you ever wondered how anthropologists and pathologists can determine sex from skeletal remains? Although it's difficult to nearly impossible to determine the sex of infant or juvenile remains, adult male and female skeletons can differ greatly in both size and shape. These hormonally influenced variations in appearance result in predictable patterns between the sexes, a concept termed sexual dimorphism. It is also important to note that sexual determination among intersex and small statured individuals is not always exact. For example, male skeletons are typically larger, heavier, and feature more prominent bony landmarks. Conversely, female skeletons have more rounded protuberances and are comparatively smaller. Multiple features on each bone must be used to accurately predict the sex of a skeleton. Size cannot be the only factor, however, as there is significant variation between and among the sexes. So, like recognizing who produced a particular painting by its style, Precisely determining the sex of a skeleton is an art, requiring practice and experience. So let's start with one of the most reliable indicators of sex, the bones of the pelvis, followed by the skull. These two bony regions exhibit the most overt sexually dimorphic patterns. Male pelvises are typically larger with rougher projections. Comparing the two, perhaps the most apparent difference is the pubic angle. The male pubic angle is typically acute, or less than 90 degrees, while the female pubic angle is obtuse, 100 degrees or more. The iliac fossa is generally deeper and more vertical in males, while shallower and more flared in females. The male pelvic inlet is narrower and heart-shaped, while the female's is proportionally wider and more circular. The pelvic outlet, limited by the distance between the ischial spines, is much narrower in the male skeleton. These anatomical differences are adaptations for possible childbearing. The skull also exhibits sexual dimorphism. The mastoid process of the temporal bone in males is larger and more pronounced. The angle of the mandible and mental protuberance or chin are both usually more acute in males. And finally, the superorbital margins are typically sharper and more pronounced in males. Skeletal remains can also indicate age. More youthful skeletons can be gauged by stages of dental eruption and epiphyseal closure, while older skeletons exhibit progressively more fused cranial sutures. And conditions such as the sexually transmitted infection syphilis and the inherited blood disorder thalassemia can also influence the skeleton's appearance. Apply what was discussed earlier to answer the following question. While traversing the Appalachian Trail in rural Pennsylvania, Hikers discover a recently dug shallow grave and inform the local police. After pelvic bone examination, the forensic pathologist submits a report noting a pronounced anterior superior iliac spine and a subpubic angle of 85 degrees. Predict the pathologist's determination. A. Male B. Female C. Unable to determine If you answered A, male, you are correct, as pronounced bony landmarks, along with a subpubic angle of less than 90 degrees, is indicative of male sex. In summary, biological sex, as well as the age and health status of an adult skeleton, can be determined by carefully examining a variety of bony markings, with first the pelvis and then the skull providing the most reliable clues. So what? Why is it important to understand sex differences in the human skeleton? Well, such knowledge is crucial for law enforcement and anthropological investigations. When the police discover skeletal remains, they want to build a profile to match against missing persons. Did they discover a young male or an older female? And physical anthropologists, conducting archaeological digs in an ancient cemetery, for example, tried to construct a description of the population, such as average lifespan, along with which diseases were endemic in the community.